We thank God. We thank God and we praise God. Truly, we thank God. Amen. We thank God today. I'm going to ask each and every one of you who are we yet standing to turn with me to the book of Genesis. Yes. Genesis, the 22nd chapter, Genesis 22. We're going to start reading a few portions of scripture here. And we're going to start at the first verse. And I thank God because truly Jesus Christ is worthy to be praised in this hour. He is so good to each and every one of us. And the Bible let us know here in 22 and 1, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee unto the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering of to one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and sell his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for a burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said my father and he said here I am here am I my son and he said behold the fire the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together in the name of earth. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham burnt an offering, altar here and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And the 10th verse, it said, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife and slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Jesus. We just thank God for the reading of the word. We just praise the name of the Lord. You can be seated. You know, I'm going to ask each of you to pray with me today because as I look at this word of God, I'm going to say to each and every one of you, what does the Lord have to say? Because the bottom line don't make no difference what it looks like. It don't make no difference what it feels like. It was the Lord has to say about it. Because as you can look at the word of God and see Abraham would have to do what God had said because Abraham had this son Isaac was a son of a promise and, and God had let Abraham know it's Abraham I want you to go off of your son. And not only your son but your own son. And, and you think about this son that he waited for year after year after year. But Abraham had to trust God and he had to believe in what God was saying and he had to trust God for, for whatever God had in store for him. But the Lord had told him. See, that's the thing about it. You know, we look at a, a couple of verses that, but the Lord told him and, and that's the way we gotta be. We gotta be concerned about what the Lord has told us. And we gotta know that this is a test of love. This is a test of obedience that God has for each and every one of us. We don't know which way he's going to take it. We don't know the way and the path he's going to choose. That's why the Bible told us in Proverbs 3 and 5 to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lead not to our own understanding, but in all our ways our knowledge him and, and God shall direct our path. But the Lord had told him, see that's the thing about it, Abraham knew God had gave him a word and the word he told him Son, and, and the Bible talks about that it was from afar off. See, so many times. 
for things to be so close, but amen, I'm going to believe in God from afar off. He had to believe in the promise that God had for him afar off. And yet still, even though he didn't know what the outcome going to be, he had to yet trust in God. Because the Bible said, now faith is a set of things hope for him. And the evidence of things not seen. We got to believe in God now. We got to trust him now for what he's able to do. Because God can do everything. And God said to me, it's impossible. But he said, with God, all things are possible. See, we can't trust in ourselves because in ourselves, we can get all weary and we can get overcome and we can get all kind of anxiety. But the Bible said, be not weary and well doing. I don't care how hard you've been, been doing this thing, how long you've been doing that. Even as we were across the track, God was letting us go. Be not weary and well doing. Just keep doing the right thing. Just be faithful. Just continue to give. Just continue to trust in me. Just continue to acknowledge me. Just continue to move forward. Just continue to witness. Just continue to feed. Just continue to be that one. Just give my word of encouragement. You continue in my word. And then you're my disciple that did. God, what did they have to think about it? It don't make no difference what they say and what they're doing and how they're talking. What does the Lord have to say about it? And we got to trust in what God said. We got to believe in God said he would never leave us. And God said he would never forsake us. And we got to take God at his word. Don't make no difference if the sign go on. Don't make no difference how they try to tell you. You got X amount of days before you can get out of here. We got to believe in God. We got to trust in God. Because the word said, and when we come unto God, we must believe that he is. That means we got to hold on to the word. That means we got to hold on to his promises. We got to know that the promise in him is yeah and amen. And the promise will never change. It's impossible for his promise to fail. But as the power said, Unshakable. God give us a word that never changes. God give us a word that never back down. God give us a word that continues to stand in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the trial. God let us know that he has the last say so in the matter. So I'm going to let you to know today what the God has to say about it. It don't make no difference how the Satan try to come, even when the enemy try to come up on us to eat up our flesh. What does God have to say about it?
And God is not going to be the one because God let us know that we got to be patient in what he is able to do for us. So God has the last say so in it. So many times people try to knock it down and push over. But you got to say, Lord, I, I, I know God. You told me to do a harvest as a good soldier. You, the people try to say it and everything to you. And they try to make you feel like you're small. But I'm here to let you know, but the Bible says, great is he that is in me, that he is in the world. He has the power to let me know that what no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So I'm here to let you know, it's what God says about it. It's not what man says about it, what God says about it. So I'm saying to you, what has God said about the situation? Lord, I sought you, God. Lord, I'm believing in your word, God. Lord, I'm seeing you from afar, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you to bring me out from afar. David said he brought me out of the hall of a pit. He was in a deep situation. He was in a hopeless situation. But I'm here to let you know, he sought the Lord. And see, so many times, we got to seek the Lord. And the Bible said, and the, 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 David said, this poor man, he cried and the Lord heard him. And when the poor man cried and the Lord heard him, guess what he did? He delivered him out of all his troubles. And God telling him, he ready to deliver us out of all our troubles. Everything that we're facing. But the thing about it is that in the place which God had told him, Jesus. see, God has the last say so in the matter. Oh Even as he was going up, I like how he took he had a perspective. He had a right perspective, as Abraham said. He told the people that was with him, he said, I'm here to let you know I'm going up. Oh he said, I'm going up somewhere. God has told, gave me a word, and God has told me what to do. And I'm going up, and he said, me and the lad, we're going. Jesus. And he said, and when me and the lad go up, we're going to go up through worship. And when we go up worship, we're coming down. So don't be left, don't be, you wait here. I'm going to let you know, so many times, you got to go into a situation, and you got to let the devil know. You, I'll tell you what, you can come in the way you, you want to come. You can act in the way you want to act. But I'm standing for holiness. I'm standing for you. I'm standing for righteousness. So many times the people thought we were going to pull up state and they come back late, years later and they say, y'all are still here. Oh, that's the way it is when you serve God. We got to continue to still be in it. This ain't no, no quick time. This ain't no time for us to get y'all shaking in our mind. But we got to ask God, God, you stable us in our mind. You stable us in our spirit. God, don't let me be in a situation, God, where I see it like I'm on well, God. Because you said in your word, God, Lord, you are able, God, Lord, to do a seedly, God, a bodily above all I can ask and think, God, Lord, even in this situation, God, you stay with me, God. Stay. And that's the thing about it. God says, he let him know, he said that, he said that you're going to come back. Jesus. And I like what he said, he said, he said, I in the land, he said a few words, we'll go young and worship. My God. See, that's something about when you worship the Lord. That's not about when you pray to the Lord. He said, even though it may not look so good, they probably said, what does he mean? They're going to go up and the sacrifice is going to be performed. And, and the him and the lad, he already believed what God was able to do. Yes. He know what God has said in his word. He said, he said, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come to you again. I'm coming back again. I'm going to be back. I may be leaving now, but I'm coming back. Because I'm going to worship the Lord of Lord. I'm going to worship the King. I'm going to worship the one that's able to bring me back. The one that's able to do what I can't even imagine. But he told me that I got to call up on my life. He told me there was a test of love and obedience. Because the word said, why you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the thing which I say. God said, if I'm Lord, I got to be Lord over every circumstance, every situation, I got to be Lord. That's what God said, but so many times, we don't, we don't want to trust God to be Lord, but we want to think that God cannot do it. But he said, in spite of what he was facing, in spite of the, the, what the difficult may have been, he said, we're going up yonder, and I'm going to worship, and going to come to you. I'm coming back again. And even though it looked like that, the lad was going to be offered up the sacrifice, it is obedience to God, and knowing what God was going to always provide. 
He knew that God was going to always fulfill what God had said in his word. He knew God was not going to leave him in a situation that he could not bring him out. See, that's the thing about God. Where was I leading? Wherever God take us, God is going to be there for us. He's not going to lead us somewhere and have us out there wandering around and, and have no help and no hope. But see, that the Bible said, you know, the thing about God is let us know that if any man have this hope in him, and see, that's the thing about it, if we have that hope in him, if we have the assurance of God's word, we purify ourselves. We got to be pure through the word because David said, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How can I be clean in this day and the time I'm living in? This is what I'm going to let you know. You can be clean through the word of God. And that's what he said. He said, the word, I, he said, the word, I hid this word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yes. But David said early on, he talked about, I did what the word said. I took heed to the word. Yes. I was obedient to the word. Yes. Abraham was obedient to the word. Yes. Abraham wasn't worried about no, no one else, but he was concerned about his relationship with God. He was concerned about what God had told him. That's what the Bible said. He said, which God had told him. What does the Lord have said? He talked about what God had told him. God had told him what to do. And he was going according to what God had asked him to do. And God had told him to build the altar. And God had told him how to do the wood. God had told him just how to do it. The way to lay it up. How to do it. When to do it. But yet still, he, he went on and, and then it came to the point of time, the angel of the Lord had to let him know, Abraham, Abraham, you're not in it by yourself. You're not in it by yourself. I'm here to let you know, God is still in control of this situation. Even though you ran up your head, you're, you're ready to do the sacrifice, God is still in control of the situation. And see, that the thing about it, I don't care how hard things may get, don't you know Abraham had to feel like this is the son of a promise and I'm getting ready to, oh, I'm getting ready to do something to the son of a promise, but he yet trusted in God. He yet believed what God was able to do. He knew that God had a purpose for everything that was going on. And that's the way we got to be. We got to trust God. And I like what it says in the 12th. It says in the 12th, it says, Lay not thy hand upon the land, neither do any harm. See, God is a God that always protects, and God not going to hurt us, and God not going to harm us, and God always provides for us. And I tell my children, especially my daughters, the two peace and love you always got to know about the protection and the providing. That's the signifying of love. If someone protects you, if someone provides for you, that's what it's all about. And God is a God that always protects. God is a God that always provides. God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. But the Bible goes on and says here, he said, he said, I know that I fear God, seeing that I have not withheld thy son. And God said, I know what he was to you because of what he goes on to say, thy only son from me. You didn't leave not only for me. Jesus. You gave me everything. Everything I gave up to you, you was willing to give it to me. Hallelujah. And that's where it's got to be. That's what it's got to be. That's what kind of relationship you've got to have with God. Jesus. And that's the kind of relationship so we can say, you know, when we come to that crossroad, we come to that time and we say that, I don't know if I can do it. What does God has to say about it? God sent us to, when God gives us a word to do it, we got to be willing to do it. When God gives us a word to trust him, we got to be willing to trust in him. We got to be willing to trust and obey God. No matter how it may feel with us, none of us have been in a situation like Abraham. None of us have ever felt to where the only son that you, you, just, you ever thought you could have and as a son of a promise, you're going to have to give him up. But he was willing to give him up for God because he knew the Lord gave it and the Lord take it away. He knew it blessed be the name of the Lord. He was concerned about what was happening now, but he looked from afar. The Bible said earlier, how he looked from afar off. 
he said that's the thing about it. We gotta look from afar. We gotta see what God has in store for us. Yes. We gotta believe. Even like Sister Sonia said, when my our mother was praying, she was from afar off. She saw that her children gonna be saved. Yes. You know, even from afar off. I remember I heard so many men of God on the radio talking about their children in the ministry. I said, Lord, I have a desire that my children will be a help in the ministry, God. Lord, I have a desire, God. Lord, for my children to be saved, God. Lord, it's not just for those men. Lord, it's for me, God. Lord, if you do it for them, God. Lord, you can do it for me, God. Lord, because you're not a respectable person, God. Lord, if you can save in their household, God. Lord, you can save in my household, God. Lord, you're not a respectable person, God. Lord, I gotta believe what you said about it, God. Lord, I can't believe you what the world is saying about it. I can't believe how the spirit of the devil is trying to say about it, but I gotta believe what you're saying, God. Lord, I gotta trust in God. And he said, and he said that that's Abraham. He said here, stretch forth thy hand. He took his hand in the ten verse and stretched it forth and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of called out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And in a man he had to say, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Abraham was so focused. He was so into doing what God asked him to do. And the 12 verse, and he said, lay not the hand upon the lad. Yes. Don't do it, Abraham. Jesus. Oh, Abraham, I see how much you love her. I see how much you love your God. Jesus. Abraham, I know what your son means to you. But I yeah. know that you were concerned with what God had told you, what God had said unto you. Because the place that you came into, the name verse, said, which God told him. He was concerned about what God had said. He was, in, he was embracing what God had said. He was in love with the word. He was in love with having a relationship with God. That's the way he was in his relationship with God. And he said here, he said, I know that thou fear God, saying that I have not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. In the 13th verse, it said, Abraham, then lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. But the 14th verse and then said, and Abraham called the name of that place. Jesus. It was something special about that place. See, Abraham had saw a miraculous happening in his life. Thinking about what God has said unto him. Yes. 
But in closing, in Romans 8 chapter, Romans 8 chapter, and the 31st verse, I like what it says here. Romans 8, 31, and what shall we say to these things? See, that's, the, that's what it's all about. Come on now. What does God say about them things? All the things that you, you, you're struggling with, and all those things that are trying to take you out, and all those things that are trying to overwhelm you and take you out. See, Abraham had, he had, a, he had a monster of a task. And sometimes we just hung, get hung up on some things. But he had to think about the son of the promise. Jesus. That he was going to have to, to and he think, offer up for a sacrifice. But he said, I'm doing it to the Lord. Jesus. But it says in Romans 8 chapter, and it says here that, and what shall we say to these things? Jesus. See, I want to know where's our confidence. My God. Is our confidence in God? Our confidence in them things. Because our confidence in them things, them things gonna overtake us. Yes. Them things gonna shake us. And them things gonna move us. Jesus. But what shall we say to the things that My we have to deal with? Jesus. So, and see, I like the way the Bible said, what shall we say to these things? What does God have to say about those things? What does God have to say about that person on the job that's cutting up? Uh, that person in the neighborhood? Uh, somebody on the street trying to cut y'all? Somebody at the cash register acting crazy towards you? Somebody acting like, yeah, look at you and see your child of God, and they're just trying to get you going. And what do you say to these things? What did you better show them a smile? Because I'm here to let you know the Bible said, death in life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it eat the fruit thereof. And you got to know that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And as a river of the water, he turned it with us so wherever he will. God can turn that situation. But what you got to know, too, the Bible said, I saw me. Turn away around. I don't care how hard it may be, you can bring that, that spirit down with calmness. A soft answer. Turn away around. A grievous word stirs up anger. When somebody gets in your faith, you know how it can be. But when somebody comes with a soft answer, you know how that can be. But we got to be mindful of what those things may be. And we got to be mindful of what God has to say about it. Yes. In the same passage of Proverbs 15, we're talking about a soft answer. It talks about how the eyes of the Lord is in every place and beholding the evil and the good. God sees everything. everything. God knows everything. And God wants us to be obedient everywhere we go. We got to be saints of God. Jesus. The Bible let us know he didn't win his souls is wise. The Bible tells us that we got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Why do we say to these things? Jesus. Don't let the things take our witness away from us. Yeah. We got to fight for the witness we have. We got to fight for the lifestyle we have. Yeah. The Bible says we got to fight. We got to do harmless as a good soldier. Jesus. This is the thing about it. What should we say to these things? Don't let the things overwhelm us. Don't let the things get us out of the will of God and, and cause us to talk to people unseemly, act unseemly, and do things that are going to destroy our witness. What does God have to say about it? Lord, I want to do according to what you told me. Like I, Abraham said, what well, God had told him. What God said about it. Abraham was doing what God had told him to do. That's what he was doing. That's why God had that ram in the bush. That's why God knew that Abraham feared him. Jesus. But what are we going to do about the things? Jesus. How are we going to let those things overtake us? How are we going we gonna to allow our lives to be tarnished? Because all it takes is one time. Jesus. It don't take 20 times. All it takes is one time with a person. Jesus. Think about it. So many times they talk about if you think about somebody done great things, they, they bring up a negative, or they bring up their name, and the first thing a person gonna bring up is that name is gonna relate to them what they did negative. It don't make no difference how all the positive things they've done. Come on. You know, but it's just that one negative thing they could have done, and everybody gonna go straight to the negative thing. 
And that's why we got to be careful. We got to be careful. We got to walk according to God. But God has something to say about these things. He said, but what shall we say? Then, shall we then say to these things? And here's what we got to understand. If God be for us. See, that's the thing about it. That's what we had to say to them things when we was on the other side of the track. Right. We had to say, God be for us. You know, you know, I, you know, I, I know that was much talk, but we kept loving them. Amen. We kept loving them. Jesus. All the signs up, we kept loving them. Y'all still here? Kept loving them. Yes. Kept loving them, and God blessed us yes. through the love that we showed. It's not only to them, but to others, and God has a purpose for us to go Father and higher in Him. And I thank God for the spirits. I'm going to take nothing for the spirits of what we experienced when we was over there, as they say, in the combat zone. Jesus. I thank God for what we, we love God and Lord us in the combat zone. We, we were the exposure that we had in that combat zone. You know, being able to talk to people in situations and seeing how people live and, and being able to communicate with people that we never been around. Yes. We learned so much. Yes. And God has blessed us through that. He allowed us to be better, be able to come in and be better, to speak to people, be able to, to deal with what's going on in our lives because of the combat zone, or say across the track. Yes. And I thank God that we see the hurt. We see what they're doing for drugs, and we learn things that you can even imagine what they're doing for drugs and, and what great extent they're going to, to get drugs and, and what it, how drugs control their lives and, and nobody's safe around it. And they used to tell us things. Jesus. And I thank God for it. Jesus. But it said, what should we say to these things of God be for us? Who? Jesus. That's the thing about it. Can be against us. My God. Don't make no difference. See, that's the thing about people who try to do everything they can to stop the work of God. But I'm here to let you know that nobody can stop the work of God. God's always going to have a witness. God's gonna always going to have someone to represent. God's always going to have a mouthpiece. God's always going to have someone that's going to hold up the, the blessing. Somebody's always going to know about Jesus Christ and, and let a entire world know that Jesus Christ is soon to come. He's not coming back as that baby in the manger. He's coming back as a judge. And you better get your life in order. You better make sure you know him because you're going to give a count for everything. Down in your mother body. But who can be against us? Don't make no difference how they come. Jesus. We, we see the proof. We see the proof. Sometimes they come and they go, they say, we need, they won't. They ain't they gonna go down. But, but yet still, if God is for us, if God is for us, it don't take a lot, it just takes committed people. It takes committed people with one mind. It takes people that's praying. It takes people that believe it. And you can show the world what God can do. Yes, yes, yes. As Brother Evans was just talking about how the man was blessed and he was just blessed and he was blessed. And they don't understand how you're blessed. How you're blessed. The Bible says if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You got to give to God. There's no way that you can, you can beat God. Give it no way it's impossible. The Bible said he don't just come and give us life. And the see, it's the part everybody talking to trying to make people think the blessing of God is a car, a house, and a bigger church. And you know, and all these travels that you can go throughout the world, that's the blessing of the Lord. But the Bible said he come and give us life, and not only life, but life more abundant. He give us abundant life. He give us joy. He give us peace. That's what God give us. And there's no price tag you can put on that. He give us comfort. He give us our minds. Well, our minds not everywhere. You know, as James, our double-minded man is unstable. We have stability in Christ. We not unstable in all our ways because we have the word of God that stable us. We have the word of God that shows our spirit. We have the word of God. And that's what God has to say about it. God said, hey, who going to be against you? If I'm for you, who gonna be a who, who can touch you? 
What weapon can actually be formed? It can be formed, but guess what? It won't profit. It won't make. It won't do what it purpose to do. It just can get formed. Let them come and knock on the door. Let them put up the sign and let them tell you, you get ready to get out of here. Come. No, let them put close the door on you. Let them say, you're good enough for a bank loan, but you got to come up with this, this amount of money. Let them say that, you know, you, this building may not be for you because, you know what, you know what, I need this and I need that. If we can't work it like that, then we don't work the deal. Let them say what they want. Let them say, we got three, four people lined up for the building. And, and so we don't know if you're going to be able to get in. But thank God for somebody. Thank God for somebody. And people praying, have a mind. We're going to keep calling. We're going to keep calling. We're going to keep calling. And the numbers keep dropping. And the numbers keep dropping. Then it came down to this number. Jesus. If God be for us, who? See, that's the thing about what God has to say. God has to find God don't know about it. Who can be against us? Jesus. Who can be against Jesus. us? And the 32nd verse in closing. Jesus. Jesus. Think about what God did. Hallelujah. See, I, what goes on in life, we got to think about what God did. And the 32nd verse says so much about what God did. Jesus. He spared not his own son. Jesus. Wait a minute. Doesn't that sound like Abraham? Abraham, he didn't let his son cause him to not to trust God, but this God. Jesus. And think about Abraham. He spurred not his own son. My God. But the difference between the son and the promise, and then this one right here, but it said, but what else he did, but delivered, he gave to us. He delivered him up for us all. Jesus. The great thing about God, he's for every one of us. Yes. Jesus Christ died for every one of us. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. You know, that's the thing about it. He gave his son for all of us. Yes. He said, how shall he not with him uh oh how so freely give us all things. Yeah. Look what the things he said he's going to do for us. He's going to give us all things. What can you say to anything, God? That I'm going to give you freely all things. I'm going to bless you to have all things. God loves us and God cares for us. And God has the found to say in everything we're experiencing. God has told Abraham and God is telling us that God has said to each and every one of us that he has given us all things and God cares for us yes. to let us know that he loves us. Yes. And no matter what goes or come, God give us the victory. God give us the ability to conquer whatever obstacle coming our way because God has the last say. Amen. Let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. Let us stand.